Hey everybody, it's me, Nicholas Rogers, with the Big Timber Lodge. Finally, after months of waiting, I am bringing you the official Big Timber Lodge review of the new PSA Micro Dagger magazines. So let's jump right into this. So, to be honest, these magazines took almost three weeks to get to my house from the day that I ordered it. It was actually 20 days. And the packaging, kind of lackluster. So this is just the packaging that it came in, in in my mailbox. But this is the packaging that the magazines came in. Now, not saying I need something fancy, but just saran wrap holding these two mags together, it almost felt like I was doing something illegal when these showed up. But I didn't. I purchased them legally from their website. Now, there could be a reason why, though, it doesn't have a whole bunch of fancy plastic and labels to help cut down on cost. And we'll get to that here shortly. But I just wanted you to see, this is what it came as, so don't expect too much more. All right, let's do some comparisons. As I open up this packaging or this saran wrap, for those of you that are new to the channel or unaware of what the PSA micro dagger magazines are. Well, they fit the Palmetto State Armory micro dagger pistol. However, they also fit inside of a Glock 43X or a Glock 48 in both the non-MOS and MOS styles. But why would you buy one of these, let's say, versus a Glock OEM plastic mag? Well, the Glock factory magazine only holds 10 rounds and these PSA Micro Dagger magazines hold 15. Now, there's another brand of magazines out there that holds 15 rounds for the Glock 43X and the Glock 48, and that is Shield Arms. So, why then would you purchase, let's say, a PSA Micro Dag versus a Shield Arms magazine? We'll get to that here shortly. But first, let's take a look at these mags. So, this is the slick finish micro dagger magazine and it has a chrome finish on the metal portion of the body and then an over molded polymer front which is black with a black follower and then a black base plate it seems like it's well made and it's definitely kind of a hybrid between the glock factory magazine and the shield arms metal mag let me explain. So looking at these magazines up close, this is the Glock 10 round polymer magazine. Now I, I say that it's polymer, but it actually does have a metal insert inside of it. But it's predominantly just going to be plastic. It's one of the reasons why it can't hold as many rounds is because the pressure from having that many bullets, let's say if you were to try to put 15 rounds into this magazine, would be too much for the casing and it wouldn't be safe nor reliable. Now, Shield Arms came out with the S15 magazine. This is the Gen 3. And it is a solid metal body construction with a robust follower spring, a robust follower, and also a robust base plate. Now, the body is solid metal. However, because this is a solid metal body, you have to use a metal mag release button or a mag catch on your pistol because this steel will eat away at the OEM plastic or polymer mag catch if you so choose to use it. And then it will make the pistol unreliable over time and not safe because the magazine will eventually just fall right out. Like I said, but if you use a metal mag catch, this magazine will work just fine. Now, this is the new PSA Micro Slick Micro Dagger magazine. And you'll notice that it has a metal body, but it also has this over molded polymer on the front. Now, what that has done is it's allowed this magazine to hold as many rounds as this Shield Arms S15 mag, meaning that it holds 15 rounds, but because it has this over molded polymer front, like the Glock 43X, same material, it allows you to use this 15 round magazine safely 
reliably with the Glock Polymer OEM magazine release button. That's pretty cool because that's going to save you probably about $40 instead of having to purchase a separate metal mag release button like you do with the Shield Arms. You can just use what comes with the pistol. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at how hard it is to load a brand new PSA Micro Dagger magazine. I've actually had my Shield Arm mags loaded up just sitting around to help compress and break in that follower spring because that can cause some issues if they're brand new, as we found out from previous videos that I've made. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unload the Shield Arm mag and just talk a little bit about the two different mags that are in front of you. So we have the Glock Polymer 10 round, and then we have the PSA Micro Dagger magazine. If you live in a state where you can only have 10 rounds in your magazine, then just stick with the Glock 10 round magazine. There is nothing wrong with those mags. They're extremely reliable, they feed well, and they give you a lot less issues than aftermarket products. Now, let me go ahead and move this pistol out of the way. That is my personal Glock 43X MOS. And see how hard it is to load up this magazine with 15 rounds by hand. This is the first time I've tried to load one of these. So first one goes in fairly easy, no issues. Second one. All right, it is starting to get tight. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. Eighth. Ninth. Tenth. And eleventh. Woo. Ooh, 12, Ooh, 13, okay, for number 14, let's see if the Glock magazine loader works, and it does, definitely for 15, gonna have to really Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's a tight map. But what do you expect, right? They're putting 15 rounds into this tiny little space, and the follower spring has to be strong enough to be able to push all of these up. So they're going to be tight when you first purchase them. So just like the Shield Arms or the Glock magazine, I would highly recommend that when you get these in the mail, Go ahead and load them up with some rounds and just let them sit there for, who knows, a week? So that the spring can actually break in and when you actually go to the range, you're not gonna need a loader in order to get the rounds in. Cause I will tell you what, I do not think I could have gotten that 15th round in without using the assistance of a magazine loader. Now, let's go find out how they work instead of just sitting here listening to me talking about how they look and feel. Now, I will point out that on my Glock 43X MOS, which is this pistol right here, I do have a Shield Arms metal mag catch inside of this pistol. Um, and it will, it seems like, work with one of these PSA Micro Dagger Slick Finish mags. It goes in, and I'm able to close the pistol. It's unloaded. And it seems to come out fairly easy as well. Now on the PSA Micro Dagger website, they said, no, you do not need to use a metal mag catch, use a plastic one. So I'm actually going to leave the metal mag catch in this pistol, just because I'm going to be testing out these mags. And if I like them as my carry magazines, then I will be putting the Glock Polymer mag catch back into my pistol. And I just want to see if they work with the current mag catch that's in there. 
And then I can also look at where the mag catch hits the actual overmold on this magazine to see if there's any sort of distress or wear and tear coming from having a metal magazine catch on this. Now, I'm going to bring the polymer mag catch with me to the range as well as some tools. And if the magazine doesn't work correctly in my pistol, then I will swap out for the polymer mag catch and see if that fixes the issues. But from what I've seen online, this shouldn't be an issue for me. So let's get to the range. Just loading up some blazer target ammo, nothing special. We have both of our mags. I have my holster, Glock 43 XMOS. Let's go give this a shot. All right, so I have a steel target for me at about 10 yards. I'm gonna put the mag in. There's no ammo currently in the Glock 43X, just to see how it feels with the loaded mag. A little stiff going in, nothing crazy, but I did get good response, positive click from the mag catch. Feels like it's in there secured. First time loading around, loaded just fine. Let's see if we have any feeding issues. No feeding issues. Next mag. Went in just fine with the slide being in the rear position. Good positive click with the mag catch. And this is with the shield arms metal mag catch. No issues. Let's load them back up. All right, so we're gonna use some more of the blazer brass. Goes in nice and easy. Loads, there's no hesitation when you slingshot load. Next magazine, remind me to use the mag release lever. No issues. Don't judge me on my shooting. <laughs> All right, so mag went in nice and easy. Slide was already in the rearward position. Mag release lever worked just fine. All right, that's two more mags down, no issues. Let's load them up with something else. All right, so up next, we have a couple of different mags. So this is just some Federal White Box 115 grain. Slingshot, no hesitation. The mags seem to load very well in this Glock 43 XMOS. Let's see if I can do better on the target. Not bad, still no jams. All right, so the second mag is loaded with some Fiocchi range dynamics, 115 grain target ammo. Let's try that slide release again. Once again, it goes in nicely. I will say that there is a little bit of chrome that you could see through the gap between the base plate and the magwell. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. All right. Yoki Range Dynamics. It's 
Still no jams. I mean, this thing is running pretty darn perfectly with these PSA Micro Dagger magazines. No complaints. All right, so let's go load it up with maybe some more target ammo and some self-defense ammo and see how it runs. So first up, we have some Mag Tech, 115 grain range ammo. Goes in, cycles fine, no hesitation. After releasing the slide, No issues. Now, what I want to do, holster that empty. So I have a round of some Remington 124 grain jacketed hollow point. I'm going to load that into the pistol, load it just fine. And I'm really going to stuff this pig for my viewers. So I put the mag in and it is not coming out. It feels secure. Now we're going to rock one in the chamber, 15 in the mag, just like you would in a conceal and carry situation and see if that gives us any issues. No issues at all. All right, so I ran through two, four, six, eight mags, fully loaded, one stuffed pig with a whole assortment of training ammo and one full mag of self-defense. Zero issues. Let's go back to the lodge and talk about this. And just like that, we are back in the Big Timber Lodge. And boy, was that a cool experience to say. I mean, I had zero malfunctions with eight magazines with a whole range of different target ammo and one stuffed pig of self-defense ammunition. Now, in front of me, we have my Glock 43 XMOS, which I used for a long time to test the Shield Arms mags, which gave me a big issue. But we found out that their fix was just having the magazine loaded like it is now and letting it sit for a while to break in that follower spring. Now with the PSA Micro Dagger magazines, you saw me load them for the very first time today and I had zero issues. So that was pretty cool. And not only that, they ran with the Shield Arms Metal Mag Catch which on their website they say don't do that run it with the polymer this is the plastic magazine catch that comes from glock so it won't cause damage to the magazine now i'm looking at both of these psa mags and granted i only shot each magazine four times but to the naked eye, you really can't see any sort of distress or wear and tear that was saying the metal magazine catch was hurting the mag. However, if the company is saying, don't use a metal magazine catch, use the polymer OEM catch that comes with the pistol, that's what I would recommend to you it's also going to save you around $40. So you don't have to replace this little button to let your magazine out of the pistol. And saving that $40 could mean you could buy two boxes of practice ammunition. So looking in front of me, we have the Glock OEM factory 10 round mag. We have the Shield Arms Gen 3 S15 magazine. 
And we have the PSA Micro Dagger, Micro Slick Finish magazine as well. So here are my final thoughts on this. I can't say for a fact that this magazine is better than this mag or this magazine. There hasn't been enough study done. There hasn't been enough product of this magazine released into the public for a long enough period of time to get actual data from real world use and practicing to tell you that this magazine is better or even just as good. But if I had to base it on my own personal experience, if you live in a state where you can have more than 10 rounds in your magazine and you could have a 15 round mag, I would say, take a look at this PSA Micro Dagger magazine because from my research, a Glock factory 10 round OEM mag is going to cost you around $25, but it only holds 10 rounds. The PSA Micro Dagger magazine holds 15 rounds and works with the Glock 43X or Glock 48 polymer mag catch, and it's going to cost you around $33 when they are in stock. Granted, this particular micro finish has this chrome backing. I think I would have liked it better if it was all black. Didn't really care for the chrome sticking out the bottom of the pistol grip between the grip and the actual base plate. I just don't like that. I, I like stuff to look uniform, but, but that's me personal, personally. And I know that they do make a black finish on these micro dagger magazines. Now... What about the Shield Arms S15 Max? Well, if we're being honest, the S15s haven't had the greatest reputation since they were made. So how much does a Shield Arms mag actually cost you? Well, you're looking at roughly $42 for a Shield Arms S15 magazine plus you're going to have to purchase a metal magazine release button, which you don't have to have for the PSA Micro Dagger or the Glock OEM factory magazine. So that leads me to think, if you already have a Shield Arms S15 magazine set up on your Glock 43X or 48, and it works for you, you don't have any issues. It seems reliable and you've shot a thousand plus rounds through it with practice ammo, self-defense ammunition. I do not think there is a need to go out and purchase the PSA Micro Dagger magazine to replace your Shield Arms Max. However, if you are purchasing your first set of 15 round mags for your Glock 43X or your Glock 48, and you haven't purchased a metal mag catch, I would say give the PSA Micro Dag mags a shot. But make sure you're practicing with them, make sure you're training with them to ensure that they're going to be reliable and consistent. From my short-lived experience with them at the range today, I would say they fed fantastically. They were very reliable. They went in and secured themselves very well into my pistol, and there was no hesitation of loading the first round all the way through the last round in that mag. But like I said, these are pretty darn brand new to the market and there hasn't been enough real world data to say that they are going to be reliable after long term use or that future batches being produced and sold to the populace are going to be just as quality controlled measured as this first round was sold to the public. But I have a feeling they will be. 
So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Obviously your most reliable, most perfectly made magazine that's sitting in front of me will be this Glock OEM factory mag that was made by the producers of the actual pistol you want to put it in, but it only comes with 10 rounds. And in a self-defense situation, capacity is king. So if you can find that aftermarket magazine that makes you capable of carrying 50% more ammunition in one mag, then go for it, as long as it's going to be reliable and you feel safe carrying that pistol. So I hope you guys learned something from this review, and I hope you walk away with a better insight. And until next time, peace.